Congratulations. Nice to meet you. John Furrier, Hi, John. Silicon Angle. How, How are you? Are you? Good. Nice Welcome to, to the you. Cube. Thank you. It's not a cube, though. It's a, it's a circle. They're all it's a conceptual <laughs> cube. It's oh. a conceptual cube, and that's our brand name. But, you know, we love to be on the ground and talking to the smart people. Ah. So thanks for, for joining us. My We're pleasure. in this historic place. I know. It's wonderful. A lot so, of history here. Okay. So it's my partner, Dave Vellante. This is the Cube, our flagship telecast. So uh, tell us uh, what's going on with you and, and what's new. Okay, good. Uh, I can tell you a little bit about HP sustainability efforts. Yeah. Okay. Since you're here in front of Bill and Dave's office, maybe I'll start there. Absolutely. So um, our efforts into environmental sustainability aren't new, so we didn't just get into this uh, field or this initiative because it's fashionable or trendy. Actually, we had the foresight of two a very forward-thinking founders, Bill and Dave, who believed a long time ago that it was not just about making a profit but also about making a contribution and giving back. And uh, in 1958, when uh, Bill and Dave established the first corporate objectives for the organization, they listed corporate citizenship as one of the eight corporate objectives, right alongside market leadership and profitability. Despite what Milton Friedman said. Here, here. Did he say something different? Yeah, he trashed, you know, uh, you know oh. giving back to the community. He's, I huh? personally feel that that's his, I, I'm with Bill and Dave, so yeah. you know, yeah, good I for them. Yeah, I think you can do both. Yeah, can why do both. not? I, he, it's he, good he, for business in my view. They said that right? uh, profit was a means to an end. Right? It wasn't the ultimate end. It was a means to an end yeah. so that you can contribute. You can do both. And they were astute business people, mm-hmm. obviously, because Absolutely. it's grown to, what, $126 billion over 72 years. But I think it's important to know that it's really been part of our legacy and part of our DNA. Mm-hmm. So uh, obviously that doesn't mean we're resting our laurels. We'll keep uh, raising the bar on sustainability, and we try to drive it not only into our product portfolio because we like to – say that we have the most energy-efficient portfolio in the industry, which is very important, and I think you saw some of those uh, examples today, but also we drive it into our operations, uh, both our footprint, our facilities, and our real estate, as well as into our supply chain. Yeah, which is huge. I mean, you which have is a huge. $60 billion dollar supply $68 chain. $68 billion dollar supply 68 chain. 68 now. It keeps going up. Well, who, maybe, I, uh, maybe, I, well, 60-ish. It's huge. It's <laughs> well, he was 50. When Plus we first had Dave Donatelli on, yeah. he was bragging about $50 billion. And the next time we had him, he said, Dave, it's up to 60, so I wouldn't be yeah, surprised if it's pushing huge. 70. It's huge. We have 700 production suppliers in that supply chain. It numbers over 300,000 people. And uh, in that supply chain, that's not just that, – that's outside of – you know. and, of course, that's an extension of ourselves. Right. So making sure that they adhere to a high level of social and environmental standards uh, in the supply chain is, is very important. And so uh, back in 19 – no, 2002, I think we set up the uh, – we, uh, we established a social and environmental supply chain standard. That in 2003 became the standard in the EICC. Are you familiar with the Electronic Industry mm-hmm. Citizenship Coalition? And that's the standard that everybody in the supply chain adheres to today. So right. we're very instrumental in helping to shape that standard. Right, so you quantify that, you report on that on yeah. a regular basis. Yeah. yeah, for the past three years, we've yeah. a lot of transparency and visibility. So three years ago, we asked, uh, we published first ever list of all our suppliers, top tier suppliers. And that got quite a lot of stir and controversy because people said that's, you know, confidential information and can proprietary information, why would you want to publish it? And we said, no, it's important because it's an extension of ourselves. So we published the list of all our suppliers. We've done that every year since. It's right in our Global Citizenship Report. And then three years ago, we actually asked them to, our first-tier suppliers, which represent like 80% of our supply chain, we asked them to uh, publish and report on their carbon emissions, so their global footprint or the carbon footprint, which they did. And as you can imagine, the first year was a little bit, they didn't quite understand what we were asking, et cetera. Second year, it got better. So this is the third year we've uh, reported on our supply chain carbon emissions. A lot of people, a lot of people, you know, in the trends out there, you see Occupy Wall Street and all these, you know, mm-hmm. these, you know the younger generation kind of don't know what's going on. A lot of people don't know that legacy of HP yeah. about how much HP actually cares about this. Mm-hmm. I mean, I worked at HP for nine years. I remember, oh, I remember when they moved from the white boxes to, you know, just being sustainable yeah. and then all kinds of, you know, with the toner cartridges, et cetera, uh, and other uh, consumables. How important that is. Mm-hmm. Okay, now you have this announcement that we're talking about today around, you know, data centers, and you're seeing Facebook, for example, just announced they're putting a data center in the Arctic. So people are trying to do all these new things to try to help. Uh, what have you seen in terms of trends around sustainability, around you know really making a difference, versus just punching it in as a check a box on some report? What, do, what, what, what can people look at in the public mm-hmm. and say, you know, that company really does a good job? Hmm, some of the trends. Is there a, is there a way for the average person out there in the tech industry to say, oh wow, I can recognize mm-hmm. that that company does a good job with sustainability? Yeah, so I think um, making it relevant and communicating it to the average consumer, I think, is still a challenge. I think it started off a little bit on a backward foot when the whole conversation was about the science, 
global warming, even climate change, and people can't quantify that. They can't yeah. visualize it. Funny story was uh, we bought a new washer and dryer this weekend. This is an aside. But I thought it was very clever because they had the washer and dryer. They had the washing machine. And on top of the washing machine, it was Energy Star rated, of course. It yeah. was the most ultra-efficient. Yeah. But they had stacked um, four high and six deep water bottles. Um, you know, not that they're very sustainable, obviously, but, uh, you know, the plastic water bottles. Mm-hmm. And it said with every load that you do... In this washing machine, you will save the equivalent of this many water bottles. Now, that really hits you in the eye, and you say, wow. And, you know, cost savings, of course, helps. But I think we haven't, as a sustainability community, done a good job of of quantifying and making it real. So that's why we're really focused a lot on energy efficiency, because it's not just carbon footprint, which is interesting, but, you know, what is a carbon footprint and CO2E, but we really yeah. are saying where it affects the but pocketbook. In the, in the U.S., we're kind of spoiled. We water our lawn. We do these things. Mm-hmm. We don't understand the magnitude of that, but out, you guys are a global company. Correct. What's going on outside the U.S.? Clearly, there's a, an awareness in India, for example, and other countries where Europe. they understand this. Mm-hmm. What's the global balance Japan. like? I mean, can you share some insight into kind of the sustainability picture globally and yeah. the relations and how that affects business? Sure. So we are a global company, as you know, and I think about 65% of our revenue is outside the U.S. based on this past quarter. So we definitely have a big global footprint. I do, you do see trends differently. So we do have manufacturing hubs, distribution hubs in various countries. So I think what you see is products made in China for China that are really constructed for the local um, the local consumption, culture, yeah. consumption, you know, maybe they're disposable. traveling more, on, yeah, disposable on, uh, issues or uh, they're smaller statue perhaps, the products are lighter. We have the same in India. So you, you do have different emphasis. In Europe, obviously, um, their regulatory process is so much farther ahead of ours. So a lot of what they do um, is for regulatory market access compliance. But when we, like the Ross 2 initiatives that were introduced last year, when we have to meet a standard in one country, because we are global in 170 countries, that following year we make it a global standard. So just saying we're going to do this in yeah. France or this in Germany or this in California, it's just too much it's complexity just, to manage. Yeah, yeah. So what we say More is... More efficient we, internally, just go standard, right? Absolutely. So we, we do. We take any of those standards and roll it out globally. It's just more efficient. So how has the initiative affected the bottom line? <laughs> you know, Daniel Esty in his book uh, Green to Gold, right? Mm-hmm. Basically the premise was it's good for business, and, and has your sustainability effort been been good for the bottom line? It has. We like to say, uh, we like to take the conversation away from <coughs> environmental responsibility to talk about business, sus- or environmental sustainability to really talk about business sustainability. This is really about how can you sustain HB as a business or as an industry for another 72 years to come, right? Mm-hmm. And that means having enough access to the raw materials at the price point that you need and the quantity yeah, they're not you need. disconnected are they yes. no they're not <laughs> so we do talk about top line growth and mm-hmm. so you see some of the products that are most energy efficient we have a number of them not only our product portfolio but our product offerings that give insight and intelligence to consumers so they can manage their own footprint or the water consumption etc so it's good for the top line it's good for the bottom line cost savings and efficiencies anytime you can reduce consumption you're reducing cost which obviously helps the bottom line and it's a good market differentiator market leadership angle so we look at all three and not just nice to do because we don't want to make it uh, separate we really want to drive it mainstream into the business I have kind of a left field question or a question out of left field at Stanford giving a talk to some young students and, and I see I have kids, my oldest is sixteen, mm-hmm. I have a young one is nine and and um this kind of post nine eleven culture, you're seeing a different mindset. I mean I'm forty six next month, so I grew up in the eighties, I guess. And so there's a different kind of mindset. But you know, post nine eleven you're seeing a different cultural mindset for the young being educated right now in college, trying to look at disciplines. And there's a sustainability thread that we see coming through this kind of next generation. Can you share your vision on the insight or advice for folks in college or or, our younger generation about disciplines to pursue? Because the sustainability or clean tech Mm -hmm. areas are really hot right now from a, you know, we need to solve some big problems. Mm -hmm. Um, And I talked to Prith Banerjee, and, you know, he, he always talks about, you know, we want to solve these big problems in the labs, and you guys are doing a lot of research here at HP Labs. Um, what would you share with those folks out there who might see this video about things to study, curriculum, mm-hmm. career paths, 
Mm -hmm. um, all have kind of, you know, in, in the future inventors, the future entrepreneurs out there. Yeah. So I, I think today's, I have three in college and, and one just out of college, so still paying those bills for a couple of years, right? <laughs> you have four so, kids, too. We have 12 yeah. kids amongst us. Oh, wow. Yeah, I have four oh, hey. Kids. Hey. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah. 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 amazing. Some of that. Yeah. Let's go have a cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> we, need, we need it. Pay we those owe, bills. We owe, yeah. Off to work oh, we go. Isn't that how it goes? <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah so right. so I, I, I think you hit it right in the head. I think that today's consumers or today's college graduates are looking for more than just a paycheck. They're a little bit more self-absorbed, perhaps, or maybe that comes with age and maturity. I don't know. But I think they are looking to make a difference and to contribute. And I think it's not just um, the paycheck, but it's what you can do with the paycheck, work-life balance, quality of life. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of the students, I'm um, even if they're general MBA students or other disciplines, they've taken some course in sustainability or environmental studies, which I think is very, very valuable. So I would encourage you know uh, anyone in college to be mindful of sustainability as it impacts their discipline. So whether it's sustainable finance or sustainable human relations or sustainable um, product design, you know, I, how do you build sustainability in? Because that's really how we're going to get a mainstream movement going, right? It's not that it's a fringe just for the environmental studies, PhDs, the green people. It's really how do you take yeah. those mindset and build it into your, your core curriculum and your Any discipline. technical areas you would you know, see that might not be obvious? Uh, obviously, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, computer science. Is there any kind of uh, disciplines? It's important in all of them. There's none that I would call out. I think you'll hear from Chandra Khan. He's very uh, – yeah. he'll talk a lot about the mechanical he engineering. He talks a lot. We know Chandra Khan. Yeah. He's awesome. The, the mechanical engineering because he said there's really a, a, um, um, a lack of mechanical engineers coming out. So I think it's really important in all disciplines, whether it's quantifiable or whether it's the softer sciences. So – Okay, my final question is, what's your challenge for the next five years of sustainability for HP and, and how you're dealing with the current flux and changing yeah. marketplaces, cloud and mobile and yeah. products, introductions are faster, cycle times? Yeah, so I think that there's two big challenges. One is to stay ahead because we appear on number one, two, or three in most of these ratings and rankings, and whether you put any credence in them or not, you know, they're nice to do, and we're not working to be in, in a rating or ranking at a certain level, but it's also a nice affirmation that people recognize that we're doing well, whether it's from a disclosure, or visibility, or performance standard. So I think our, our um, challenge there is to stay on the top. When you're number one, two, or three, everybody wants to knock you off, right? Mm -hmm. King of the hill. So that's one challenge is, is keeping up at a pace mm -hmm. that uh, if, you're, if, you're, if, you know, if, you're not, if you're not moving forward, you're, you're losing ground. Yeah. So that's one, because our competitors aren't standing still. And even though we've had a 50-year head start in the space, as I mentioned earlier, our competitors, even though they're, they're catching up, they started slower, they really are full court press. So I think that's one of the big challenges. And the second big challenge, I think, is really to take it from niche to mainstream. I still attend a lot of conferences, a lot of seminars, and I feel like everybody in the audience is nodding their head and they all get it. the headlights are more like, no, yeah, they we get it. Do it. Yeah, we get this. But you look in the room and there's 200 people in the room and you say there's got to be 2 million people. So I don't think we've okay, taken it, it yeah. mainstream. You know, and there's still a lot of talk about EV companies and solar companies and wind companies, and those are the companies that are, that are heralded as really making a difference in clean tech. But when you can get an HP at our size and scale, three and a half products a second we ship, if we can get that into mainstream, then you really can take it from niche to mainstream. So I think that's a big challenge. How do you get the mainstream? Is it education? Is it more um, programs? What do you think? Consumer education is a big one, making it in very tangible terms, but also, you know, the move to integrated reporting. So I'm a big advocate for, for sustainability financial statements. you got to talk the language of business, and I think companies yeah. need to do a better job of quantifying. So that's why it's not carbon. It's cost, consumption, and carbon. I mean, that's important, but it's cost, consumption, how you affect in the top line, how you affect in the bottom line, and, how and do you integrate into the financial systems. And, and, and technology presumably can help you do that. I mean, we sp yeah. spend a lot of time talking about the product, but the product is probably a small portion of the impact that we can potentially have, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah absolutely. Applying technology to do reporting and maybe censoring. And the bigger <laughs> opportunity is to take the technology, which is, you know, our products, and so, even if they're the most energy efficient in the world, and I, I think that, you know, we keep that pressure on, that's still only 2 to 3% of the mm. whole carbon footprint. Mm. Right. How do you take technology innovation, some of the stuff you've seen here in labs, and really uh, transform or disrupt that other 97, 98% industries, whether it's tech, transportation, logistics, agriculture, forestry, uh, commercial buildings? How do you take technology to take a carbon heavy process or industry and make it low carbon mm. like we've done for printing mm. so you take 52 trillion pages are printed every year 52 trillion pages only 10 percent of those are digital 90 percent of them are analog pages and analog pages is a lot of printing distribution you know 
uh, repulping because a lot of the stuff, magazines, books, you know, goes back and never gets sold. It's a very wasteful process, mm -hmm. right? A lot of transportation. If you can digitize those pages and then you don't, you, you're distributing them and then printing them locally in the quantities you want, where you want, if you want them at all. It's a much more efficient process. On demand, yeah. right? And that's what the and whole announcement today was all about, this harmony around yeah. having that kind of performance. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think my, my feeling is, is that, you know, you mentioned the core values of HP citizenship being one of them. Profitability was key. You know, the same argument always comes down about Sarbanes-Oxley, you know, the cost mm -hmm. overhead involved in managing, you know, going public for the financial and now with sustainability. You know, some companies may not, may just try to, skim and not do the right thing. So yeah. the balance between that citizenship, you know, responsibility needs to be mindful. And I think, I'm not sure if the government may provide some incentives. I mean, do you see the government being involved? Is it a policy issue too? Or, I mean, yeah. most people will say, ah, it's too much reporting, the cost for me to implement these systems. I've got to hire all these people. And well, Is that a factor or is that just Well, we're more doing all this despite the fact of having any big government uh, mandate. Or, well, you're right. HP. HP's, yeah. HP's so we're doing uh, this I think business company. has yeah, HP yeah. has to I mean we have to continue uh, leading the way and yeah. hopefully help shape some of those regulations yeah. when they do inevitably come best ca practices kind of you know mm. case studies yeah yeah. Exactly. I agree. It's important. Well, thanks uh, Thank for you. coming on the Cube. Appreciate it. Thank you. So nice to meet you. Thanks for coming. Keep up the great, good work. Great for sharing. All right. Okay. Thanks Appreciate for it. subbing in. It was a great conversation. Yeah.